Manga Wido. My name is Mal Yamase. I'm a first year high school student. In my class are my cousin Tomoya Okawa and his best friend Naoki Kato. We've been hanging out together since we were little, and we know each other well. What are you reading, Tomoya? An anime magazine. The one that came out yesterday. I'm watching this anime too. Hey, lend me the magazine when you're done reading it. Sorry, this is Naoki's magazine. I don't mind. Mao, if you want to get addicted, I'll be happy to lend you a hand. No, I'm not sure about getting addicted, but thanks, I'll return it as soon as I read it. We were close like this. I was more comfortable with Tomoya and Naoki because I had more things in common with the guys than with the girls, but there were also girls who didn't think well of me. This is Emily Nishino, the most beautiful girl in school. Yamase-san, why are you talking to such a creep? Who I talk to is none of your business. You're as beautiful as I am, aren't you, Yamase-san? Talking to an ugly person is degrading. I'm not a classy girl to begin with. I choose my friends, so leave me alone. Oh my, I'm trying to warn you. You're so rude. Emily's the type of person who likes to have beautiful girls around her. Emily is surrounded by beautiful girls that look like models. I'm thankful she judged me as beautiful, but since then she seemed to have locked onto me and started getting involved with me every chance. But I have this kind of personality, so I can't hang out with anyone in particular. Each time I softly declined the invitation, Emily gradually began to, It's your fault! Get involved with Tomoya and Naoki selfishly. Tomoya and Naoki didn't mind at all, but the reason being, the reason being one music instructor. His name is Susuyu Sensei, and he's really beautiful. Emily seems to have a thing for beautiful people, and she fell in love at first sight with Susui Sensei. Most of the conversations with her cronies were about Susui Sensei. If that's all, it's fine, but now that Sensei has become friends with Tomiya and his friends, it's a big problem. Susui Sensei? About what we talked about the other day. I found something. In the next town. What? Really? Tell me the details! Oh my, those otakus are talking to Susui sensei again. How come? Even I'm too embarrassed to talk to him. How annoying. Since Tomiya and the others were getting excited, I thought they were talking about otaku stuff, but it was different for Emily, who was convinced that Susui sensei is a prince. She imagined that Tomiya and the others were talking to him forcefully, and the kind Susui sensei was in trouble because he can't say no, and she began to look at them as enemies. Stop hanging around Susui sensei It's beyond brazen for a bunch of dorky otakus like you to talk to him! We're not trying to hang around him. He's right. We're being moderate. Can't you see he's bothered? It doesn't look like he's bothered to me, though. If anything, he comes to talk to us. Absolutely. Shut up! Kato, can't you do something about your creepy way of talking in the first place? Your hair is weird and your pen case is super gross with anime patterns. Duh! This is my dear Lilina, and she's definitely not gross! People like you are unworthy of Susui sensei Stay away from him! She treats him like enemies. After that, Emily turned on Tomi and Naoya, as well as any students who approached Susui Sensei as if they were her enemies. She's scary and it was annoying to get involved with her, so most of the students stopped approaching Susui Sensei. But Tomi and Naoya didn't seem to mind Emily at all, and they continued to get along with Susui Sensei after school, talking in the music room. Tomi and Naoya seem to be having a lot of fun lately. You've been dropping by the music room every day recently. Are you coming today too? Of course. I'm going straight after cleaning. We're going to start a club. I was thinking how I want Sensei to be the advisor. This is a meeting for that. Would you like to join us, Mao? Well, this club sounds fun, but I feel a killing spirit coming from behind me. I glanced, I glanced behind and saw Emily, who looked like she was about to hit me with the broom she was holding. There's a scary person staring at me. Well, I'll think about it. I thought it wouldn't be a problem if we didn't talk to her, but... I heard you! You're making Susui Sensei your advisor? Yeah, he said it's fine too. He's busy! He doesn't have time for creeps like you. I told you before to leave him alone, didn't I? However, Tsutsui Sensei is also very enthusiastic about the idea. If you want to get close with him, you should join our club. Of course I won't join! That's enough! Take this and cool down! Wondering what Emily was going to do, she squatted down and grabbed a bucket full of water. What? No way! Uh! Naoki! Are you okay? How dare Emily pour a bucket of water on Naoki and Tomia? Tomia was safe because he dodged it, but Naoki was soaked from his head to his shoes by the direct hit. The force of the water also knocked off his glasses. 
My glasses! Where are my glasses? Hmm. That's what happens when otakus get carried away. What? What? Emily shouted in a loud voice as Naoki brushed his soaking wet hair out of his face. The students around were surprised, saying, What? Kato? There, that's no wonder, because Naoki with his bangs up and no glasses was so handsome. Here, Naoki. Your glasses. You can use my towel to wipe. Oh, I'm sorry. Both of you. What? What's with that face? You're good looking. Hmm? I've always had this face. Since I was born. Say, so if you're good looking, why do you have such a lame haircut and creepy... Why do you have such a lame haircut and creepy glasses? I can't believe it. Say Sophie's good looking. She's pretty strange too. But I see. I've known Naoki since I was little, so I wasn't that surprised. But it's true that the normal Naoki and the no glasses Naoki with his hair up are two different people. So it's natural that people are surprised. The students around him were also surprised. And some of them were even taking pictures of him while crowding around. Emily, what's with your face? Are you thinking I wouldn't have splashed the water if he was good looking? No, that's not. You're such a child to judge people by their looks. You're not seeing them for who they are. Isn't that pretty bad for a high schooler? What? It's his fault for dressing like a creep even though he's good looking. It's Kato's fault for deceiving me. I'm just dressing the way I want to. No matter how others see me, I am a true warrior. I will show you my two dimensionality to the fullest. And so, while we were arguing in the soaked hallway, Sisui sensei came by out of nowhere. I waited in the music room, but you didn't come, so I came. What's the matter, Kato? You're soaking wet! Sisui sensei um, this is... Kato did this by himself. Huh? What are you talking about? You splashed it on him, saying something like, take this and cool down. Stop! Don't say that in front of Susui sensei! When we told him everything that had happened, Susui sensei looked stunned. This is a clear act of violence, you know. And it's not nice to judge people by their looks and call them gross and verbally abuse them. I'm sorry. If you want to apologize, you should apologize to Kato. Uh, I'm sorry. Emily's apology has been accepted. I'm not sure I understand what's going on, but it's possible for anyone to go out of control because of love. But I will not change my appearance no matter what you say. So please, understand that. Kato! I mean, Naoki, you're good looking. Why don't you at least cut your hair? You don't understand, Mao. This is so much easier. Yeah, I know what you mean. I used to dress like you, Kato. What? If my hair is short, I have to go to the barber every now and then to get it cut, which is a hassle. Besides, glasses are easier than contacts. That's right. As expected of a teacher, you know how otakus feel. Sensei, you're an otaku? Yeah. I've been an anime otaku as long as I can remember. What? Then what happened after was... The next month, Emily somehow ended up joining the anime club that Naoki and his friends started. The trigger was a comment from Naoki. At that time, Naoki made an outrageous proposal with a smile while soaking wet. Emily? I've always thought that your voice sounds like my beloved Lilina. You're right. She sounds just like her when she's acting all cute in front of Tsutsui Sensei. Huh? Acting cute? This is who I am! Don't be rude! Your angry voice sounds just like Lilina's in battle scenes. Don't you think so too, Sensei? Indeed. Come to think of it, I was thinking that Nishino-san's singing voice sounds just like Lilina's character voice. It's decided. What is? Emily, would you like to join our club? What? Yes! Please sing for us! We could make a great song together! What? At first, Emily was puzzled. Why would I join a group of otakus? But she reluctantly agreed because the advisor was Susui Sensei. But then, by the time the festival was held in the fall, she got so immersed she started singing cosplay. Not only Emily, but her beautiful friends joined the club one after another too because it looked interesting. And they get to wear cute clothes. The anime club has now developed into a chaotic group with a mix of otakus and beauties. Hey Emily, is that a new outfit? You look great. Uh, I'm only wearing it because they asked me to. Really? But your makeup is perfect. You did that yourself, didn't you? Shut up! Just... I just thought if I was going to do it, I'd make sure it was perfect. Hey, can you stop smirking? Later, the grown-up Emily became a voice actor and did the voices for an app that Tommy and his friends developed. But that's a story for a little while longer. 
Anyway, I'm glad that Emily has matured. I have a feeling that her life as a student will become even more enjoyable from now on.